Lysis is a philosophical text by Plato, written in the form of a Socratic dialogue. The central theme of the dialogue is friendship, what it means, and what is the nature of love that underpins it. The conversation involves Socrates, who engages two young men, Lysis and Menexenus, as well as other attendees in a men's wrestling school, including the sophist Hippothales. The dialogue begins with Socrates arriving at the wrestling school, where he notices Hippothales, visibly infatuated with the young boy Lysis. Hippothales has been composing poems and songs in praise of Lysis, seeking to win his affection. Socrates chides him, suggesting that such direct display of admiration could have the opposite effect, causing the beloved to become arrogant or unapproachable. Socrates takes the opportunity to show Hippothales a better way to woo someone by engaging Lysis in a discussion on friendship in the presence of Menexenus, another boy. The first part of the dialogue sees Socrates questioning Lysis on whether he is allowed by his parents to do what he wants. Lysis admits that he is not, leading Socrates to inquire further about the nature of power and who truly has it, suggesting that true power is connected to wisdom and goodness. Socrates then begins his examination of friendship. His first attempt to define it is to suggest that like is drawn to like. If good men are friends with good men, it seems like an ideal match. But problems arise when they consider that good men are self-sufficient and have no need of friends, while bad men cannot be friends because their wickedness divides them. Socrates revises the theory, moving to the idea that opposites attract that the good befriend the bad because the latter lacks goodness, which the former can provide. Yet this idea is also dismissed, because then it would mean that the good would befriend everything that is bad or lacks goodness, which is absurd. A new perspective is introduced, friendship as a form of desire. People befriend those they desire, which extends to people desiring what is neither good nor bad because they lack it. For example, the rich may befriend the poor because they lack friends, but this logic too fails, as it cannot explain friendships where there is not a notable lack, or when friends desire each other's company for no apparent lack. The discussion thus transforms into an analysis of desire itself. Socrates proposes that the desire for something arises from a state of lacking that thing, which he equates with a sort of pain. By extension, Friendship or love is caused by an awareness of one's lack and the pain that accompanies it. The object of one's love, then, should be the remedy to that pain. Yet as Socrates notes, this line of reasoning has a problem because it leads to the conclusion that one can only love what one lacks, and that once the lack is fulfilled, love would disappear. This does not seem to capture the enduring nature of true friendship, which goes beyond a mere reaction to lacking something. The interlocutors consider whether there is something inherent in the nature of friends that bonds them beyond these lacking elements. They think about the idea of a kindred spirit or a second self, suggesting that one loves in another what one appreciates as good in oneself, or alternatively, recognizes potential for improvement or completion in the other. They touch upon the concept of a soulmate, someone who is characteristically and fundamentally suited to another person but this too becomes a difficult concept to pin down and defend. Plato's Lysis then moves to a discussion on the role of wisdom and knowledge in friendship. Socrates speculates whether the wisest and the most ignorant can truly be friends, or if friendship lies somewhere in the middle, between those who know and those who do not, but are aware of their ignorance and seek knowledge. This brings them to consider the role of the philosopher, who recognizes his own lack of knowledge and whose love of wisdom, philosophy, is driven by the desire to fill this void. The dialogue concludes without reaching a definitive answer or theory of friendship. Socrates, Lysis, and Menexenus are left with a deepened understanding of the complexity of love and friendship, but without a clear road to navigate the topic. The dialectical process which they engaged in, questioning, examining, and refuting various propositions, has led them through intricate considerations, but has not yielded a satisfactory conclusion. Lysis stands as a reflection of Socratic method and the philosophical inquiry's intrinsic value. It is through the very act of engaging in these discussions, through the probing and challenging of ideas, that individuals come to sharpen their understanding and enhance their wisdom, 
even if they do not arrive at a definitive answer. The dialogue reminds readers that certain concepts, like friendship, can be deeply enigmatic and resist reduction to simple definitions. The philosophical journey, Plato suggests, is about embracing the complexity of these concepts and through dialogue and introspection, coming closer to the truth, or at least refining our ideas about it.